built in 1911, designed by W.W. W. Beach, who was a, a very active architect here in Sioux City at that time. The Egro Harv, the name, is a combination of the children of Gordon Badgero, Egbert, Ralph, oh, that, and I Harvey Badgero. Time. And the Badgeros had long been uh, a, a family that that built, they built a lot of buildings in town. There's not just a single Badger building. In fact, on the corner right over here where, uh, that corner there, um, that was the, the Tacoma block, like Tacoma, Washington. Uh -huh. It had been built by, first? it had been built by Gordon Badger because he also had investments in Tacoma, Washington. You know, I gotta wonder from, a, from my design standpoint, don't you think, what year was this built? 1911. I would imagine in 1911, people would have thought this was the ugliest, most unimaginative building. Most <laughs> no, I would. It's if yeah. you, so basic. If you put that thought, mm -hmm. in, you look at this was here, and, and then here. this? That's so true. I, I mentioned that, that conservatism in spending, but it also oh. happened in design. It happened in design in the 20th century. Things were getting... Sweet. Sioux City had all the money in the world in the 1890s to build these elaborate structures, and it yeah. was a different style of architecture. Yeah. Then this was probably considered, the Egglehart was considered more modern architecture of the time. That makes sense. And it was far less, far less expensive. There's nothing significantly decorative about the Egglehart except for the corbel bricks. So that's the stepped out bricks up at the top. Right. That's really the, the only decorative feature of this building. Right. And that's a, Even the windows are just, ugh. Yeah. You know? and, even the corbels really aren't integral to the design. They're just they're just right at the top. And but then, that early that early 20th century architecture until we until Sullivan-esque really takes over, yeah. it is kind of boring. Yeah. Yeah.